Hi everybody, welcome to Missy's Imaginings. I hope your December is going well. Um, we already have some of the 12 gifts of Christmas posted on the website, so those patterns are ready for you. And one of them uh, we'll be working on today. And I just had a couple things I thought I would show you. Um, if you're looking for uh, fun dolly things, it's always fun to check out like thrift stores and uh, garage sales and estate sales. And I have a friend whose sister is sort of in the uh, liquidating estate <laughs> type of situation. And so my friend brought me some really fun little items, which I thought was exciting. So we have some pretty, whoa, some pretty little laces. And she said, just pick out of the bin the stuff that you like. So it was fun to pick out some laces and a ribbon. This one has like little pearls and uh, just some fun things that were available that are dolly size. So that was exciting. So I thought I would share all that. So now sometimes I'll see a bit of lace and then that gets my thoughts um, generating new ideas. So sometimes if you're in the mood to be creative, but you're just not sure what you want to go with, sometimes it can be inspiring if you just go to a fabric store, not necessarily to buy, but to look. And if you look at a lot of the, the ribbons and laces and trims, sometimes it will generate ideas on the style of a dress or the style of, um, I don't know, a sweater or pants or whatever you're making. But sometimes you can get fun ideas just by the actual fabric itself. I have um, mentioned before, I did one pick uh, one pattern that it's already on the website and I did make it up. I'll go ahead and put a picture here. But this whole, the idea of this, this coat and hat, the entire thing popped into my brain when I saw the color of the vinyl. Um, I don't know how it happened. It was the color. And I saw that color and I thought, hmm, that needs to be this coat. I'm not sure why. Another thing that I had was I was in Joanne and this one I did actually buy the, the fabric for it but I saw some fabric and I thought I need that because immediately in my head this outfit <laughs> was in my brain and so I did get the fabric and, and made this outfit so sometimes you can get inspiration from materials and textiles um, whether it's the look or the feel or the texture or the amount of ruffles. And so I thought it would be fun to have some of these little ones because they'll probably inspire something, some kind of creativity. So just a little bit of, of fun there. So I have some little ruffle lace and uh, like I say, some ribbon. So hopefully that will inspire some fun projects. Another little bit of exciting, exciting news <laughs> that I thought I would share. And I never thought in a million years this would happen. But I have um, one of the YouTubers that I like to watch, and I've been watching her channel for many, many years. Um, and actually, one of her reviews inspired me to buy this doll. <laughs> and I would get her out, but she's kind of packed away right now. But I'll have a picture of her. And um, it is an Obitsu 50 centimeter. And then I did actually put the Gretel head on her rather than the one that comes with the doll. Um, I just like this this face better. But anyway, um, Asenva is um, on YouTube and Instagram and she messaged me a little while back and I was so excited and <laughs> so honored that she did a shout out um, for me and featured me as an artist in her newsletter. So thank you so much Asenva. That was so exciting and Hopefully, because I'm I'm a little uh, starstruck, hopefully I'm saying your name correctly and, <laughs> and all that. But I was so excited. And uh, so that was really fun, a really fun thing to do. So big thank you. And uh, if you guys have not seen her channel, she has all kinds of wonderful videos on BJD Care, on BJD Recommendations, on BJD uh, Face Ups. 
and on tools to use, just a, a wealth of information on her channel. So if you go over there and, and show her some love, then that would be really awesome. But yeah, so that was a really fun thing. It was like, wow, I'm just overwhelmed. <laughs> so a big thank you to her. And um, so yeah, if you saw that, then we can all celebrate because that was really exciting. And then we'll move on to our project today. Of course, <laughs> I know, and I, I said this in the blog post, I know there's many of you who are not K-pop fans. You are not BTS fans, and that's okay. Um, here in our house, we are. And even if you're not a fan, you have to admit, you have to give, you have to give kudos to their fashion because their stylists and fashion teams and even the artists themselves, they have a wonderful sense of fashion. And I'm always blown away by some of the designs that they wear. And granted, there's, um, I think all of, all seven of them now are ambassadors for different brands. Um, there's one in particular that I still want to make, uh, the outfit. It was by Louis Vuitton and I love the outfit because it was modeled by J-Hope and I hope I don't get in trouble, but I'm going to flash a little photo there so that you can see the outfit. It's just phenomenal. I just love the look of that suit. And then, um, of course the designer, uh, that did like all their hand box. And so I wanted to do the hand box sets that they wore for their idol performance. And you guys have seen all that and the progress of that. But lately Jungkook did his solo concert in Seoul and the outfit that he was wearing, it was just, you know, a black leather jacket and a white t-shirt, but the jeans, the jeans were amazing. And when he was dancing around, cause we watched the concert of course, and I just thought I have to make these jeans. I have to make these jeans. So that's what we're going to do today. And making pants is pretty easy, pretty straightforward. I have a lot of videos that show how to make pants, but there are a couple different techniques that we'll be using for this pattern that I haven't used before. So if you download the, the pattern, it will look really wacky. <laughs> so it will be printed out on eight and a half by 11 size paper. And you'll see there's one picture for the front and one for the back that will show a whole bunch of lines on the pattern pieces. So I'll pull these up in a minute. So what you want to do is cut these out and this overlap, it'll say overlap for attaching. So you attach this to this piece with tape or glue before you cut anything. Do not cut on these lines. Don't cut on those. This is going to be your guide facing or anchor that we're going to use for, here we go. And if you've seen the pattern, you'll know and, and be going, what are you thinking? But these jeans are totally pieced together like the shells on an armadillo. And it was phenomenal. I love the way they look. And so I did up the pattern and if you look at it, it will say to serge all these edges because I didn't want raw edges of fabric inside the pants. But after I got this much of the pattern ready, I thought, wait, why not just anchor these to a piece of facing? Because that would help make sure the hemlines are all in the right place. So that's what led to these pieces. And so these pieces are going to be on a piece of interfacing. And then you'll actually draw these lines onto the piece of interfacing and then that will be a guide to which these pieces will match up as you tack them down onto this so that once you put the the pants together they'll actually be like lined um, because i i wasn't going to use denim i was going to use like a denim look cotton but to keep the authenticity of the project, I decided, no, I'm just going to use a really lightweight stretch denim that I found. So I did find some that I am repurposing from another garment. So I have all my little pieces cut out <laughs> and all my front pieces are lumped here. 
I think that was, no, that's the back pieces. And then all the front pieces are lumped here. As far as the jacket and the t-shirt, they're still part of the pattern set, but they're so basic and I have lots of, of uh, videos on how to put a jacket or a shirt together. It's pretty much all the same. So those we're not going to worry about. But the pants will have the interfacing pieces. And I used a, uh, a real thin, so you can see the light through there, very thin. And then once the pieces are, now I have to have my glasses on, are hemmed. We'll grab this out. So my front... So for instance, they'll have armadillo jeans, front section two, and then on, there we go, the pattern piece, it will have the sections numbered. So for example, this is section two. So this piece, once it's hemmed, the denim is going to be placed onto the anchor. We'll get the dark well, the actual jean side to show. So this will be hemmed and we're going to work our way up. And so the, once it's hemmed, it's going to be sewn onto this anchor. So that will help make sure that all of these are layered correctly because there is a little bit of overlap at the top so that the overlapping pieces, you know, aren't showing, uh, you know, a hole underneath because you don't want that. So let's get our, our, uh, Front piece so then this piece when it gets layered on it will have a, something to line up against so that those lines will all lay correctly on the pattern piece and then all the hems will be placed correctly to make this look so that's what we're going to do for our project today I'm kind of making a mess as I'm going through all of this but once I saw them, I thought, I have to try to make these. So the first part of the job, because I'm going to anchor them onto the interfacing, I'm not going to worry about surging the top edges or the side edges. And I'm just going to turn under the hem and I'm going to press it down. I'm not going to actually hem it down because when I sew it onto the facing, I'm going to actually sew the hem as I sew it to the facing so that I don't end up with a hem seam and then another seam of sewing it to this. I only want one seam as a hemline on each piece. So I will be pressing those edges under a quarter of an inch and then when I put them on, I'll just sew one seam, which will anchor it and will hem each piece all at the same time. So it'll be a little more clear as we do it, but just so you're a little bit prepared that um, there's going to be a lot of ironing involved <laughs> because all these pieces have to have the iron uh, applied to hem uh, those folds down hem the folds down, iron down the folds where the hems will be for all of these. And of course, remember when you're cutting that you need to cut and draw your lines, but your uh, pieces need to be opposite directions. So make sure that you have them laying opposite directions. Uh, so that's what, another reason I use something so thin is I can trace the same image, but then I can just flip it over because these, it doesn't matter which side is a good side or a bad side. And it's uh, see-through enough, translucent enough that when I flip it, I can still see the lines on both of these pieces to guide where I'm going to lay all the little tiny um, parts that we're going to put on there. And a couple of them aren't actually going to be layered. They're going to be pieced together. So we'll show that as well when I get the machine uh, turned around. And then the jeans also have a yoke, which will be applied not as a layer, but as a pieced uh, part. It's optional to have belt loops. So I have some cut. And then these jeans will also feature not only the 
front inset pocket, but it will also feature the little coin pocket that will show in the opening of the pocket. So there is the, the little front coin pocket that will go inside there that will need to be placed. So there's a little more detail on these jeans, but I thought, well, if we're, if we're going through the effort of all these pieces, we might, we might as well just, you know, say the sky's the limit and make it all pieced together. <laughs> so we'll switch up the camera and uh, we'll go ahead and start on this project. And I'll try to be as concise as possible just because there's going to be a lot of repetition. It's going to be a lot of ironing, laying down, and sewing it down. Ironing, laying, and sewing it down. There's going to be a lot of that. The main thing I would say is to make sure you have both sides of your fronts with all their pieces separate, and then both sides of the back with all their pieces separate so that you don't get them mixed up and placed in the wrong location. So that's going to be what will take you uh, that and, and hemming, or not hemming, but ironing the hems. Uh, those two bits of organization and prep work will probably be what takes the longest. And then other than that, once that's all finished, it's just putting together a, a pair of pants. So that won't take very long. So here we go. Are you ready? <laughs> okay, we'll switch up and uh, get the machine ready and then start sewing. The first thing that I have ready is I've taken all the pieces for the two front of the jeans and laid them in the correct order so that they're all placed correctly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with just one piece, then I'll move to the second piece so that my pieces don't get mixed up, and I'm going to work from the bottom up. Now these first uh, four, uh, three pieces down here, they're not going to have anything iron. I'm just going to sew them together on this seam and this seam. Then this one, uh, well, I'll, I'll back up a little bit. So I'll sew these seams and then I'll attach it to the little facing piece that we have underneath here. So I'll move these aside. I don't want them to get mixed up here. It's hard to do with one hand while I'm holding my camera. Sorry, my hand's in the way. So we have this piece of uh, interfacing. There it is that's marked with the same lines. So I'll sew these three together and then I'm going to attach them to that piece. Then these are all just going to be pressed on the edge that would be hemmed and then I will lay it on top and when I top stitch that, that will actually be attaching it to these pieces. So I'm not going to sew the hem and then put it on. I'm going to iron that and then when I top stitch it, that will actually be my attachment as well as it lays on top of these and attaches to the facing underneath. So I'll get this much done and then I'll come back to the camera because then we'll kind of see the progress as it moves up the piece. And then that will be the same process for the other front and then the two back pieces as well. So hopefully this will be an expedited video, but you'll be able to see how this progress works. So these pieces are put together and I basted around the outside and then I did top stitch on either side of the center piece just to anchor that down. So that's what it looks like on the underside. Now to make sure that I have the little point in the right place, I'm going to lay the pattern piece on the top like so. And then I'm going to hold this and this is all pressed and ready to go except the tip is going to be a little bit challenging on these, um, especially this one because it's very pointed. So I'm going to hold the bottom with my finger and then I'm going to hold this in place with these fingers and then just remove that and there we go. That's where I'm going to go ahead and place this one and I'm going to, uh, when I sew it down, because I don't want it to bubble as I try to go around the corner, I'm going to start at the tip and do one side then start at the tip and do the other side on this one because it's kind of a long uh, distance and I know if I start up here and come down then it's going to shift on me 
and I want it to be right in the center here. So there we go. I'm going to put that down and I will be pinning right here in the center just to kind of help anchor that so it doesn't shift. And then I will pin the edges. So we'll grab a pin for each of these edges on the side. Ow. Try not to get your finger when you do that. And then one over here to hold it in place. So then once again, I will be putting a piece down and then that will be top stitched and anchored to our, our facing and we're on our way to getting the first piece done. So here's some progress so far. I did start in the middle and go up on the real pointed one, but these smaller ones, it is working if I just pin the center to start on the side and come down, down the angle, back up and up the side. So I'm not really having any problem with that, but that's what it's looking like. So we're getting the layers put in. So I think it's going to be really cool. So here's the finished uh, first front piece. So we'll see if the light can catch all those cool layers. Oh, I love how it turned out. I got a little bit of a pucker down here, but I can always just take a few of these stitches out and lay it flat and uh, then get rid of that pucker. But all the layers just put, went in there perfectly. So now what I'm going to do is I thought I'd go ahead and finish up this side because this is the side that will have the little watch or coin pocket inside the front pocket. So to do the front pocket first, I'm going to lay one of the pocket pieces right sides together with the front piece, just so that the pocket edge is lined up. Then I'm going to sew just a quarter inch seam allowance then once I do that, then I'll trim it down to about an eighth of an inch seam allowance because you don't want very much. Then we'll flip that so that it's the right side together and uh, then I'll come back to the camera. Now that that's sewn and trimmed, it's easier to see that we're going to flip so that the right sides are out and that creates the edge of the pocket. So we'll flatten all that out. This edge will now be top stitched. And once the top stitching is done, then this back piece that's left over here is going to fold to match the side seam. And that creates the pocket. So there we go. So once I have the top stitching done and I can see how that's going to place, then I will take into account the seam allowance for the waistband and the side seam and go ahead and place this little uh, inset pocket in the right position and stitch it down onto the, the back part of that uh, pocket lining, so to speak, so that this will show above the edge of the pocket and uh, that'll give us the little coin pocket. I've already turned over the edge and top stitched it and folded and pressed the sides. So it's ready to be inset and I'll just sew down both sides and across the bottom. I'm not going to finish the bottom because it will be well bene beneath. It will be well below the edge of this pocket and won't show and uh, folding it that edge as well will just add more bulk that's not really needed. But because these edges on the sides all show, then those need to be folded in and uh, turned under. But this one, I'm just going to leave the raw edge because it doesn't matter. I may go ahead and serge the bottom edge, but that would be the most I would do to that. So that's how I'm going to finish out this piece, is to finish the pocket, and then this entire front piece will be done. Then I'll do the same exact process to the other front piece, except for this little coin pocket. It won't have it in that pocket. Then once that's done, I'll do the same process to the back pieces. And um, once those are all done, then we'll go ahead and assemble the pants using this just as a simple piece of fabric now that it's all assembled. 
All right, so here is the little pocket in place and the entire front. There we go. And then on the back, I did forget to mention, uh, when I get the pocket put in, I always just serge the bottom closed before I sew up the side seam and across the top because that fold will go across the top edge. So I always close up the bottom just by serging that closed. Um, I don't worry about uh, hemming or turning those under um, just because I want it as flat as possible. So here we go. And then I also serge the front edge of the fly because that will be turned in when the pants are going to be assembled like this. But again, I want it to be as flat as possible, so I don't want raw edges, but I don't want to hem that. So I just serge the edge of the fly on both pieces. So that's what this front piece looks like when it's all assembled. And now I will follow the same process on the other front piece as well as the back pieces. And uh, once those are all done, we will put the back pieces uh, together with the yoke. So. That's what we'll be doing next. Sorry about the weird lighting. Um, my blinds have been attacked by kittens. And so <laughs> I got a lot of weird spaces uh, that let light through in weird ways. But here is the back pieces. They're all finished. So they're all pieced together. And I put the back pockets on. So now to assemble the back, I'm going to put the right sides together. And I'll do the crotch seam and then I will sew in the yoke that will go here so then with the right sides together I will sew down to the center then pivot the piece and sew back up to the other side and that will get the back pieces put together then I will go ahead and put the front pieces together so here I have both of the fly edges surged and I will sew the crotch seam in and then uh, trim, I'll do a little bit of zigzagging to secure that and then one of the pieces from the fly will be left as normal so that it will cover the opening well and then the other one will fold backwards to make the center front of my jeans that will go like this and that will be the front of the jeans so then I'll just uh, do the top stitching to indicate where the fly is I'm debating on whether or not I want belt loops I think I will but I'm still contemplating sorry about my arm here on making the belt loops if I want to just try fold them and sew one seam uh, I'm just trying to think on how to do them so that they are the least bulky as possible the other way is to fold them fold both edges in and then uh, top stitch that but it makes them really wide which I don't want so I'm still kind of debating on what I want to do for the the belt loops. If I fold them in and then fold it again they're more narrow but then they're really fat. So I'm not sure what I want to do with those. So I'm still deciding on how I want to attach uh, those. But once I get the yoke on and the front and back like totally put together then I will go ahead and do the side seams on uh, each side but I will not hem the pants until I get the side seams done then I'll hem them and then do the inseam so we're we're pretty much close to being finished at this point because pants are pretty easy to put together once you get the pockets all in so yeah we'll do those steps next and uh, then see how it looks the waistband is now just on the pants and I went ahead and I did decide to go ahead and do all five of the belt loops and so I simply stitched them to the pants before I put the waistband on so it was just 
the little loop of fabric and I took my little piece and I folded it over once and then folded it again and then sewed it and then I just trimmed away the excess so that I could get uh, a fairly narrow because it is denim so um, I didn't want four layers of fabric so it's only three and then once I had that all stitched then the little tabs I just laid them on there and stitched them on then I put the waistband on then I went ahead and took them and looped them up and turned them over and hand stitched them to the waistband so that's how I got my belt loops on um, I have done it where they actually go over the belt but I just didn't want to do that or over the waistband so it has all three of the belt loops in the back uh, against oh sorry about that so it has all three of the belt loops on the back there above the yoke and the back pockets in and so now the only thing left to do is to turn it inside out and stitch the inseam from ankle up to the crotch and then back down to the other ankle and then put in the snap at the top and then we'll go ahead and put these on the doll and hopefully they'll be long enough now I'm looking at them I hope they're long enough <laughs> so we'll get those done and see how they look and here is the finished pair of pants so let's see if we can get enough light on here to see the detail so we have belt loops and inset pocket and then the little coin uh, pocket in here and then of course we have all the layers of denim there we go let's see if I'll shine that so they turned out pretty well I think I might prefer to make the pant legs a little wider um, just so they seem to have more room in them but they did fit together and they were long enough also I think I would extend the top piece higher and make the yoke smaller so that's one other alteration that I would probably make <clears throat> sorry my voice is getting so <laughs> terrible but they still worked and all the pieces fit together and I love how the the texturing looks where all the seams are sewn on there I just really like it <laughs> also if you want the layers to show up more you can always top stitch with like a white thread or an orange thread to make that stand out a little bit more um, and see the the layers a little bit better so there we go and then the, the three pieces at the bottom of the ankle underneath that pointed part and I did top stitch the outside seam but I did not top stitch uh, the inseam because uh, it's impossible to get my machine in there but I did do the outside and that just kind of helps them lay a little bit more flat on the outside of the doll so yeah so there we go so thanks for coming along and uh, now you've seen how to go ahead and stitch these pants together this is the Miro doll 66 centimeter slimmer uh, body so it is a lot more narrow than some of the real buff fellas out there so if you wanted to make it fit a larger more buff style uh, doll you could add more width on these pieces uh, on the side of the leg give a little bit more width there it is pretty loose in the waist there's still lots of room in the waist um, but you would just might need more room in the bum and hips and then down the leg because they are pretty slim and especially once it's um, they're all compiled with the thickness of the fabric onto that facing piece it uh, it just kind of tightens a little bit um, what you could also do is if you find a very thin um, like denim printed quilting cotton fabric that would be very very thin then that's also going to give you more room I wanted to see what actual denim would look like finished so this is actual denim fabric but that's another option for you if you needed more room 
and uh, you didn't want as much bulk in all of these seams that are turned over and hemmed because it is it is denim but even working with the denim I'm very tickled that uh, it did go together well and it does fit and um, so yeah so there we go so I hope you're having a wonderful holiday season uh, we still have a few more gifts to go on the website so we'll be adding those uh, shortly and yeah so I hope you have a great December and a wonderful Christmas and holiday season and um, I'll see you next time bye